while we are waiting for other people to join, let me start by introducing myself and my teammate who's also in here. Um, my name is Megan and I work at the National Renewable Energy Laboratory, or as we call it, NREL. We are located in Golden, Colorado. So for those of you who are in Colorado, hello. You, you can see that we are having a lovely day here. For those of you who might not be in Colorado, feel free to share where you are viewing from in the chat if you so choose. Um, but Tom and I are actually in the education department. So both of us come from science backgrounds, but what we discovered that we love about science is actually teaching people about science. And so we work at the National Renewable Energy Laboratory, helping people of all ages learn more about renewable energy. Now, you guys might not know what renewable energy is, so let me tell you a little bit about it. Renewable energy is, oh good, this is, so the Kelsey that is in here is my sister, super exciting. Hi sister, hi Neil. Um, so renewable energy is actually energy that we can use more than once. So the big energy source that we tend to think of when we think of renewable energy is the sun. Because we can't really run out of sunshine, especially here in Colorado where we have 300 sunny days a year, which is amazing. And so, we, can act, we have actually figured out how to harness this sunlight and turn it into energy. But it turns out that's not the only renewable energy that exists. The one that we're gonna be talking about today is wind energy. And this is something that NREL studies a lot about. We actually have an entire lab set up to study wind energy. And by lab, I mean it is a giant open field that has hundreds of wind turbines in it. Some of you guys might have seen wind turbines before, but even if you've never seen a wind turbine, you probably have seen something that uses wind energy. Because you guys have probably seen one of these before. This is called a pinwheel, and this works really similarly to how wind energy works, in that the wind blows, and our pinwheel spins. So this pinwheel is actually using the energy that the wind is providing to spin. Now, with our wind turbines, we use that energy and we actually make electricity from it, which is really cool. So, what we're gonna be reading about today is actually an island that learns how to make all of its energy needs. So all of the electricity that you use every day, this island figured out how to do it 100%. So they don't use any non-renewable energy. Non-renewable energy are energy sources that we will run out of eventually. There are things like oil and um, coal and other fossil fuels. And these are things that we use to make electricity all the time, which is great because we use a ton of electricity. But we are always trying to figure out how to make electricity better. So I think at this point, I think we probably have as many people as we're going to get. So I am going to go ahead and I am going to start reading our book, Energy Island by, Don, or by Alan Drummond. All right. And I hope you stick around afterwards because we're actually going to make our own pinwheels. So it will be very fun. Energy Island, how one community harnessed the wind and changed their world. Welcome to Energy Island. The real name of our island is Samso, but we like to call it Energy Island. Not too long ago, we were just ordinary people living on an ordinary island in the middle of Denmark. In many ways, Samso was, and still is, not very different from where you live. We have lots of fields and farms where farmers raise cows and sheep and grow crops like potatoes, peas, corn and strawberry. And there is a harbor where the ferry and fishing boats come in. Our little home has recently become quite famous and scientists travel from all over the world just to talk to us and learn about what we've done. Why is that? Well, that's an interesting story. Let's go and hold on to your hats. Our island is in the middle of Denmark and it's in the middle of the sea, 
That's why it's always very windy here. Oops! In summer, we have fun at the beach. And in the winter, we play games inside. We have villages and schools, kids play soccer, and grown-ups go to the grocery store. It's very ordinary here, apart from the wind. The way we used to use energy was very ordinary too. On dark winter nights, we switched on lots of lights and turned up our heaters to keep warm. We used hot water without even thinking. Our oil arrived by tanker ship and truck, and we used it to fill up our cars and our heating systems. Our electricity came from the mainland by cable under the sea. A few years ago, most of us didn't think much about where our energy came from or how it was made. That was before our island won a very unusual competition. The Danish Ministry of Environment and Energy chose SAMSO as the ideal place in Denmark to become independent of non-renewable energy. A teacher named Soren Hermansen was selected to lead the Energy Independence Project. He was a very ordinary person, too. Okay, he did play bass guitar in a band, but his favorite subject was environmental studies. He was very excited about energy independence. Tell me, class, what are some of the ways we could make our own energy right here on the island? Capture the heat from the sun. Ride bicycles instead of driving cars. Use oil from crops. Burn straw and wood. Imagine if you, we really could make enough energy from the sun and our crops and even our own legs to power up the whole island. Then we wouldn't need to worry, need the oil tankers to come here. We wouldn't have to worry about all the oil running out, and we wouldn't need electricity to be sent from the mainland. Renewable resources are so much cleaner, and think of the money we'd save. We just need to think big. But do you really think we can create that much energy ourselves? Asked Naya. From just the sun, our crops, and our legs? Well, you know, said Catherine, if there's one thing our island has plenty of, it's wind. Maybe we should start with wind energy. That's a wonderful idea, said Mr. Hermanson. Who's with me? Hold on to your hats, we all said. We kids were very excited about all the new ideas. But as for grown-ups, well, it took them a little time to catch on. It will cost millions, said Jorgen. All the cows keep me busy enough already. Heat from the sun, said Peter. Why would we bother with that? As long as I can keep my house warm and keep my TV on, I don't need change. Bicycles, said Mogan's mailer. No way, I love my truck. Why us, said Dorothy Nidson. Let some other island take on the challenge. Renewable energy, said Jans Hansen. I'm too old for that. Samso is just an ordinary kind of place said Ole Jorgensen. What difference can we make to the world? Energy independence? In your dreams, said Petra Peterson. But Soren Hermanson wouldn't give up. He called lots of local meetings. There's energy all around us, he told the islanders. We just need to work together and think big to make the best use of it. Teach the children to do it. What if I built a small wind turbine for my family? We're just a little island. How can we make a difference? Brian, 
don't talk small. You got to think big. He talked to everyone. The soccer team, the farmer's market, all the teachers, the fishermen, the police, the harbor master, the lighthouse keeper, the dentist. This went on for several years. People listened, and lots of them even agreed with what Soren Hermanson was saying. But nothing happened. Was anyone willing to make a change? Then one day, the electrician Brian called Soren. I'm thinking small, he said, but I'd like to put up a secondhand wind turbine next to my house. Jorgen Tranberg was thinking big. I want a huge wind turbine. I'll invest my money and sell the electricity it makes. Mr. Hermanson was excited. Two renewable energy products had begun. One very small, one very big. Brian called on his family and friends to help him put up his wind turbine because he's just building a little one so they could do it. While it took big ships, some giant trucks, and two enormous cranes to build Jorgens because his was so big. The project on Samso had begun and we were still using a lot of non-renewable energy. It looked like we might never achieve our dream until one dark winter night. Sleet and snow blasted across the island. Suddenly, all the electricity of the entire island went out. Everything was dark. Everything, that is, except for Brian's house. Free electricity, shouted Brian. My turbine works. Tonight, I'm energy independent. Sure enough, the blades on, Miss, or on Brian's new turbine were whooshing and whirring in the wind. Hold on to your hats, said, cried Soren. News travels fast on a small island like Samso. After that night, everyone was asking how they could make energy of their own. Suddenly, Soren was busier than ever, helping people start new energy projects. Some people had big ideas, some people had small ideas, but all of them were important to, in working towards our goal. The Holm family installed solar panels on their farm. Today, their sheep are munching grass while pan solar panels soak up energy from the sun, just like we talked about how the sun can give us renewable energy. Ingvar built a biomass furnace. It burns straw instead of oil and now heats his house and all of his neighbors. In fact, biomass is so big on Samso that whole villages are now heated by burning wood and straw grown on the island. Eric Anderson makes tractor fuel from his canola crop. And Brian's wife, Bettina, whizzes around in an electric car. Their windmills power the batteries. Today, we even have electric bicycles charged by the power of the wind. Every one of us has an energy independence story. And that's why people all over the world want to hear the latest news from Energy Island. Let's see if Jorgen will take us up the ladder to the very top of his fantastic wind turbine so we can see what Samso looks like today. Whoa! Can you guys see it? It's so beautiful. Look at all the rolling hills. As you can see, there's plenty going on. Now we have lots of wind turbines. Down there, in Samso, down there is Samso's brand new learning center, the Energy Academy, where kids and grown-ups from all over the world come to learn about what we've achieved and to talk about new ideas for creating and sharing and saving energy.
I know that I want to go to this Energy Academy now that I've read about it. Guess who's the director of the Academy? An extraordinary teacher named Soren Hermansen. Things have certainly changed on our little island in the past few years. We no longer need oil tankers to bring us oil. And we don't need electricity from the mainland. In fact, on very windy days, we have so much power that we send our own electricity back through the cable under the sea for the people of Denmark to use. Samso may be a small island, but we have made a big difference in the world, reducing our carbon emissions by 140% in just 10 years. And we did it by working together. And that's how we got the name Energy Island. And what can you do to make a difference on your island? What's that? You don't live on an island. Well, maybe you think you don't live on an island, but actually you do. We all do. We all are islanders on the biggest island of them all, planet Earth. So it's up to us to figure out how to save it. There's renewable energy all around us. We just need to work together to make the best use of it. And of course, hold on to your hats. And then here's all the people waving their, their pinwheels. So that's a really cool story about one island that made a huge difference in its ability to make its own energy. And this is something that we at the National Renewable Energy Laboratory are working really hard on, is helping cities and states create more and more of their electricity from renewable energy resources. This is why when you're driving down the highway, you might see a big area that's just covered in wind turbines. Or you might see areas that are really flat that are covered in solar panels. Or maybe you even have solar panels on your house, which is so cool. But now I want to help you guys actually make your own pinwheel so that you can also harness the power of the wind. So what you're going to need is you're going to need a piece of paper. Any paper will do. However, this is just computer paper. And I have found that it works pretty well. You're going to need a pair of scissors, but for the cuts, we you might want your parents to make the cuts. So just know if that is the case, that's totally fine. You're going to want some glue. Your parents are going to have to help you with this part, but we're going to need a push pin. And then we're going to decorate our paper however we want. So the first thing that we need to do is we actually need to make this paper into a square. Now, this is a rectangle right now, which means that I have one side that is longer than the other. So what I'm going to do to make a square is I'm actually going to create a fold. I'm going to take the corner of one of my sides and I am going to fold it so that it makes a triangle with my piece of paper. And then I'm just going to crease it. And you'll see that there's this little end that doesn't have anything. We're gonna cut this end off. So now that I've made my triangle, I am gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut right along the edge of the triangle that I made. So once I cut off that little edge, you'll see that when I unfold my piece of paper, now I have a square, which is awesome. So you'll see that I have one fold already. I actually need two folds. So now I'm going to take my other two ends and I'm going to bring them together so that I form another triangle in the opposite direction so that now I should be able to make kind of a little boat with my paper where I have four, four folds and four triangles that I've created. So I'm going to give you a second to kind of create your triangle. If you want to do this later, that's totally fine. You can just follow along if you're doing it with me. So I'll give you a second. Once we have our four folds, now this is where parents are probably going to want to step in for a second. 
we're gonna make some slits. So right along my creases, I'm gonna cut about halfway down. It is a little better to go over than under, there is no need to measure this. So I'm just gonna cut until I can see that I am visually past the halfway point. There we go, there's my first one. The most important part is that I have some part in the center that's still connected. So I make my first slit. And now I'm gonna do this on all four of my creases. So I make those cuts. All right, so I should have four slits that kind of separate the points of my triangles. So I'll give everybody a second to do this. Once you have this part done, now it's time to start decorating. So I actually found some stickers that I thought were so fun. So I am gonna put some stickers all over my wind turbine. Like I have this very funny goat sticker that has googly eyes that I think is so funny. So I'm gonna put that guy on it. I'm gonna put on my goat. I have some little happy flowers, so I'll put on some happy flowers. So I'm just putting stickers all over my piece of paper. You can decorate both sides. You can only decorate one side. That's totally up to you. I have some little stars. I'll put some stars on there. If you want to color your page, you're also welcome to color. I am a very bad artist, so I am not going to be coloring. I'm just going to decorate mine with stickers. Danny, of course, thank you so much for coming. All right. Oh no, I've only done two. Look how funny this is. I've only done two of my triangles, but I think it's turning out really cute. So I'll keep, keep going. I think I saw another, I think I had a turtle with the googly eyes too. I'm gonna try to find that turtle. Yes, I found the turtle. Although maybe I shouldn't put a turtle on because maybe a turtle would make my turbine go slowly. What do you think? I think I'm gonna do it. I think I'm gonna put the turtle on. Turtle. Oh, I also have a panda bear. Let me show you this panda bear because I think it's also super cute. So I'm gonna put this panda bear on and then I'm gonna be done with my decoration. So this is what mine looks like. I have all these little stickers on there. My little goat with my googly eyes, my little turtle and my little panda bear, which I think are so funny. Now, this part can actually be kind of tricky, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our glue stick and on the side that you didn't decorate, so you'll see that I'm using my blank side, I am gonna put glue in the middle. And I'm gonna do kind of a lot of glue because I need this to stick. And then at the end, I'm also gonna put a sticker in the middle. Now, I'm gonna take each, or I'm gonna take one of my corners from my triangle and I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna put it down and press it into the center of my turbine. Now I'm gonna take the same corner and I'm gonna press it again. I'm gonna spin it and now I'm gonna take the top one again and I'm gonna put it in. Oh, that's kind of cute. Look, my turtle ended up on the inside. That's really fun. And then I'm gonna spin it and I'm gonna take my corner again and my goat ended up on the inside, which is really fun. Now, this can actually be kind of tricky to get the glue to stay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take one of my stickers, maybe one of these little flower hearts my little circular sticker, and I'm gonna press it right in the middle so that it kind of holds all of my end pieces together. So you can see we have something that looks just like my one here. We have a few fewer um, arms, but it's still gonna spin. 
Now, this next part actually works a little bit better if you have a popsicle stick. I couldn't find a popsicle stick this morning, so I have a dowel rod. You could even use a stick from your yard. If you wanted to not use something that's brand new, you could find a straight stick in your yard and you could use that too, which would be really cool because then you're taking one renewable energy and you're using another renewable energy and it's just awesome. But this part, you're definitely going to want your parents to do because this is where we need our push pin. So parents, in the middle of your sticker, it doesn't obviously doesn't have to be exact, but you're gonna push that push pin through that centerpiece. And I actually like to do this before the dowel rod is even behind it, because then I know exactly where I'm pushing. Then you're gonna take your stick, whatever you're using, and you are gonna push your push pin right into the stick. This really needs to be done by a parent. This is actually a pretty tricky part, Parents, if you accidentally go through the um, popsicle stick, I did it <laughs> once when I was doing this a uh, different time, you can actually just put a dollop of glue on the back to kind of create just a safety barrier so that that push pin isn't sticking out and it's really nice. So I am gonna push this down on my table and I'm gonna push my push pin in. And like I said, this actually can be kind of tricky, so I'm gonna... I'm gonna put it in and I'm gonna work my stick so that my push pin goes in a little ways. Don't mind me, it's, it actually is kind of hard. All right, I'm gonna work it back and forth to try to get that in a little bit further. Like I said, if you're doing this with a popsicle stick, it actually is easier. Um, just the flatness of it helps a lot. But if you end up going all the way through, not a big deal. Just put a little dab of glue on the back and so that you cover that thing. But once you've got your push pin in, you have a wind turbine. Oops, I stopped it with my hand. Oh no, and I bent it. So now I can harness my own wind energy. Does anybody have any questions for me? This is a great time that if you want to pop in and say hello, um, that would be great. If you have any questions, you can post them in the chat. Um, but uh, any of anything else, I hope you guys have such a great rest of your Wednesday. We do do this every Wednesday. It will always be at 1030 um, Mountain Time. So if you're on the East Coast, it will be at 1230. If you're in Central, it'll be at 1130. But we hope you guys can always come and join us. Have fun building your wind turbines. I actually built one earlier too, and I put a taco in the middle. So now I've got two, two wind turbines, although this one's really poorly decorated. So don't mind that it's boring, other than the taco, which I thought was very funny. <laughs> Thank you, I am a pinwheel making master. I This is a totally, oh, just enough wind to make it go. How exciting. There we go. Ah. All right, it doesn't look like there are any questions. If you are still here and you wanna pop in and you wanna tell us how many kids you had with you today, that would be awesome. For those of you um, who love this, please invite uh, anybody else to come join. We love having a big crowd for this. So, um, oh, so um, my nephew would like to know if his windmill can make energy. It actually does make energy. This is the energy of movement, which is called kinetic energy. It also falls into a subset of mechanical energy. So when the wind turbine is sitting still, it is gathering what we call potential energy. Once it starts going, now it has kinetic energy. So it is making energy. Great question.
All right. It looks like there aren't any more questions. I hope you guys had so much fun today. Um, I hope you have fun making your wind turbines. You can see mine spinning in the little bit of wind that we have today. But I hope to see you guys all next week. I think next week we're learning about matter. So that will be very fun. You should come because I, we're going to make some balloon animals. So that will be very cool.